Good afternoon, I've got a, a Nissan Navara here, it's a 2014 and the customer complaint is that it's got bad cold starts to the point where it won't start, it's flattening his battery before he actually starts it. Um, once he gets a jump pack on and cranks it a bit more, it will eventually start. I've quickly plugged into it and we've got, as you'll see, I'm going to read the codes. Once it's running, it's running absolutely fine. This is a bit of smoke when it first starts up from cold. I've got a glow relay fault. Um, so basically that's the, it, it's pointing towards a, a glow plug issue um, I've had a quick look at the car and uh, what I've noticed is let's grab a light it's already had glow plugs so it's had four glow plugs fitted already um, so somebody has been chasing this fault um, I've noticed that the glow plug wiring comes through this connector here, just behind the battery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a test lamp, um, stick a test lamp under that wiring, cycle the ignition, and see if the glow plugs come on. And also, I think there's a there's a bi-directional test on this vehicle to test the glow plugs as well. Okay, I'm going to keep you on the on the test lamp while I cycle the ignition off and on condition off there and that's it on so as you can see the test lamps not lighting up now just to double check that we have got a good connection on the glow plugs um, I'm going to take the the tail of the test lamp off the off the ground and I'll put it onto the onto the battery positive and guess what we haven't got a good connection to the glow plugs but that's a lot there that's it, we're a good connection to the glow plugs, I've got my test lamp on. So, always best to test your gear first. So, let's try that again. So, ignition off. And ignition back on. And as we can see, no glow plug. So, I know power going to the glow plugs. So, next test, I'll grab the scanner. There's a bi-directional test on this. Tests, uh, glow relay. My scanner's trying to do a walk. Go for a walk. Um, glow relay. There we go. Select that. Okay. Right, and I can switch it on or off with this tool. So. Get the test lamp in the background, switch it on. As you can see, it's saying it's on there, and there's no test lamp coming on, off. So, no power to the glow plugs. So, it would look like we've got a, a control problem to the glow plugs. So, let's have a look next at a wiring diagram. There's a glow plug control module here. As you can see, the four glow plugs along the bottom there. And we've got power coming to the glow plug module, main power coming from a fuse, which is denoted as FN, and it's in fuse box relay plate two of the engine bay. That fuse is fed from these two fuses here, which would imagine be maxi fuses, because they're 100 and 150 amp fuses. That one there is a is a 60 amp fuse. So fuse box two. I'll find that fuse box. Fuse box two. The engine bay. View that one. And FN. There's our fuse there. Glow plugs. Looks like it's part of a combination fuse. So FN. Fuse box two is this fuse box here. And this is the, the fuse that we're concerned about. And as you can see, there's three fuses within one fuse block. So that fuse should be hot all the time. So what I'm gonna do is, get my test lamp, 
and I'm going to see if I've got power at that fuse. Okay, what I've done is, I've just flipped the little plastic cover up on the top of the fuse, rather than trying to pull that fuse out. And I'll put me, me test lamp in there, as you can see, I've got power. So, the supply for that fuse is okay also, the fuse visually is okay, there's no breaks in it. So, back to the wiring diagram. This is the fuse I've tested here. So I've got power coming out of that fuse box. So what that proves is that that fuse there and that fuse there are fine, so no need to test them. So the next place to test would be at the glow plug control module. Which is red wire going into the glow plug control module. You need to see if I've got power there. That's it there, get a light in there. in there so if I take off the multi connector look at the back I can see a red wire going in there I don't know if you can't really see it yeah the way. Be better see the red wire going up there so basically it's going that left hand larger of large terminal Again, let's see if I've got power there, using the, and I've got power there. So I've got a good power supply to this glow plug control module. Um, next thing I can try from here is I can check the wiring between the glow plug control module and the, and the glow plugs by simply putting me test lamp. to battery positive. There we go. There we go. Battery positive. Now the four pins towards the front panel on either side of that big terminal are the glow plug circuits. So I can touch one of them individually. Got power there. Got power there. I've got a, shall I say I've got power. I've got a, I've got a path to ground on all these. So basically I'm checking that the, this, the wiring is good between the glow plug module and the actual glow plugs themselves, which it is. So no wiring issues to there. Now there's two other terminals on this glow plug circuit. If you look, let's move the drone up a bit. Basically eight and three green wire and a blue wire, they go back to the engine control module. So that there will be the control side of the glow plug control. So there'll be some kind of control from the engine control module to tell the module to switch on and off. Um, now, what I'm expecting to see on them, I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook the scope up to them and see what I've got on those terminals. Right, okay, I've got the scope on the back, back probed into the, the two pins on the glow plug control module. And as you can see, on the blue channel, I've got battery voltage. On the red channel, I've got zero. So I'm gonna cycle the ignition and just see what happens. There you go. So basically, if I put some more time on the screen. 100 milliseconds, there we go. It's a better view. So the red channel is staying at battery voltage and the blue channel is what would appear to be a LIN signal. I'll just switch that back off again. And back on again. I'll pull the scope a bit closer. see that so there we go both are going to battery voltage when I switch off I switch on as you can see the LIN signal also changes pulse width as well uh, which will mean a, diff a change in communication a change in command from the engine ECU to the um, glow plug control module so 
imagine one's the preheat and one's the post heat. So I've got something there. So let's now see what if I put me test lamp again on the, the ground and it was the red channel that gave me the constant 12 volt so I'm hoping that it's going to test it's going to light the test lamp but it doesn't but also what that's done by putting the test lamp on it's pulled the red channel to ground so there's a possibility that there may be an issue with the wiring or the circuit that controls this glow plug control module because when I put load on it it's pulling at the ground or there could be some kind of current limiting device built into the engine ECU so it's basically it's sensing that there's something on the circuit that shouldn't be on the circuit and it's actually switching the circuit off so next thing is going to be to pull the plugs on the engine ECU and test the wiring between the engine ECU and the glow plug control module for continuity and also do a load test on them as well. So I've pulled the, the plugs off the engine ECU so I can uh, test, the, test these two wires that go between the ECU and the glow control module. I'm still on the back of the glow control module there. Still got the oscilloscope leads in, so I'll use them as my connections. So what I'm gonna do first is, just so I can identify the correct pins, using the multimeter, set it onto, onto ohms, and put the buzzer on. Um, and that'll allow us to find the correct pin so I've got the black lead of the multimeter onto one of the pins on the back of here and I've got the red lead here so what I need is a small piercing probe which I've got here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the to the pins of the multi plug I'm just going to touch the, the very front face of the, I'm not going to push the probe in uh, because I don't want to damage the terminals. So if you look at the diagram, the terminals are 131 and 137. So this is the wire side of the plug here. So there's 131 there, 137 there. So I'm on 13, I'm on the, I'm on the wire that goes to 137 at the minute. It's the second row. And it's nine terminals down from the bigger terminals. Turn that a bit. So I've got access to it. So one, two. It's a bit of light in there. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can hear the beep. So that's the correct terminal there. And then the other one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the multimeter now into the back of the other pin. That's one, three, one, which is three down from the, the larger pins on the same row. So again, if we go one, two, three, here they'll be there. Now, what that tells us is I've got continuity between the ECU multi-plug and the multi-plug that goes to onto the glow control module. What it doesn't tell me as if these wires are capable of carrying a load, so they could be um, pulling the, uh, there could be a voltage drop down the wires basically. So even though I was seeing 12 volts at this end, as you saw with the scope, as soon as I attached the 
test light at 12 volts drop to ground. Now that could be a, a, a current limiting device built into the engine ECU, or it could be that the wire between the engine ECU and the glow control module isn't capable of carrying load. So the easiest way to do this is I'm gonna take the black lead that I've got connected to the pin on the back of the glow module and I'm gonna put that on the ground here. And then I'm gonna take this lead, I'm gonna put the Pearson probe onto my test lamp and I've got my test lamp onto the battery negative terminal. I've got the other lead onto the battery positive terminal. So if I touch this end, the control unit end, my test lamp should light up. And if it lights up, that means I'm happy that the, the circuit is capable of carrying current. So again, third one down, one, two, three, as you can see, test lamp's lighting up, so that wire is capable of carrying current. So now I'm gonna move the lead on this end onto the other wire going onto the multi plug, and the cable's just jumped off the battery positive terminal, so I'm gonna put that back on, test. All right, the wire's all tangled here. And again, the crocodile clip's just jumped off again. The wire's all over. So, I did that, that's better. And nine, one on the ninth pin down now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine and there's my test lamp lighting up so i'm happy that those two wires that come from the engine ecu as you saw in the diagram to the glow plug control module are connected there's no breaks in the circuit but also as well those two circuits are capable of carrying current uh, even though there must be some kind of current limiting device inside the ECU because when I attach the test lamp at this end, as you saw before, the test lamp wasn't illuminating, but on the scope trace, the voltage was dropping to ground. So I'm now happy to call this, which is the um, glow plug control module. It's obviously an, a, a, an issue internally within that module. So that module is going to get changed. For this Navara pickup, uh, the next day, the new um, low plug control modules turned up. Genuine item from Nissan. Uh, it looks to have been modified somewhat. It's a slightly different part. The plug's a bit offset to that side on this one, where it's in the middle on that one. Uh, same. One pin there. It's got two pins there. I'm going to utilize one of these pins anyway, so let's see a slightly modified unit. Um, we'll get this fitted and I'll test to see if these glow plugs come live. Right, got the new module plugged in there. I've just plugged it in loosely there. I'll box it all up once I've uh, determined whether it's working. I've got the test lamp on the battery negative and then back probed into that connector again where the glow plug wiring comes through so I'm going to cycle the ignition I'll leave the camera on the test lamp if the test lamp lights up it's a fix and there we go test lamp on goes dim so basically it's a preheat and when it goes dim it starts it starts going under a, basically a PWM pulse width modulation where it goes under a lower heat so we'll call that a fix. So I'm gonna box this back up, get in touch with the customer and come and collect his, uh, his pickup and uh, he should be having um, successful cold starts from now 
instead of bad cold starts. Thanks for watching. Just a bit of bonus footage here. Um, I mentioned PWM control of these glow plugs. So I've got my scope attached to the same connector. I've got a back probe in one of the glow plug wires grounded onto the, onto the battery. Um, and we're going to look at what the voltage looks like when we turn the ignition on. Now bearing in mind it's sitting at zero volts there now. So I've got it at a 20 volt scale, so it's going to go to about 12 volts over here. Uh, what you'll see is, you should see a square wave. Um, when it's at 12 volts, it's the on time for the glow plugs. When it's at zero volts, it's the off time. Um, what I'm anticipating you'll see is that the on time will be higher than the off time initially, which is the preheat, and then the off time will be higher. Will, the off time will be longer than the on time once the plugs have warmed up. Uh, that's just to maintain the heat within the cylinders. Also as well, I'm gonna start the vehicle up and what you should see as well is that the glow plugs stay on during the warm up phase of the engine. Um, I did mention earlier in the video that the customer was complaining of bad cold starts and also uh, a bit of rough run with a bit of smoke when it was cold as well. This would be caused by the uh, glow plugs being inoperative. So we'll just turn the ignition on there now. As you can see, on time's high, and then off time is high. So I'm gonna start this up. As you can see, the plugs are staying on, even though the engine's running. This is to aid the, the temperature, to increase the temperature in the combustion chamber while the engine is cold, to increase the combustion rate of the fuel. This can stay on for minutes upon minutes. Switch it off there. So it'll say it, could, it, it could take a while for them to switch off. Um, the Japanese adopted this technology years and years ago. The first time I came across it was uh, on an old 1.7 Isuzu engines that were in the Vauxhall Astras and uh, the combo vans of the day. Um, we're going back to the old Y17 DTs. Um, and they actually used to, if the glow plugs were inoperative, they used to run like a pig. Um, the reason for this, I believe, is because as engines have progressed, or should I say, as emissions um, legislation has progressed, the requirement for cleaner running while cold um, has ha had a bit of focus, should we say. Um, and by keeping the heat within the cylinders using the glow plugs, um, this aids the cold run of the engines. So just a thought, I'll give you that little bit of bonus there. Um, so if you have got glow plug issues, um, especially if you've got one plug off, it can actually cause a bit of a misfire when they're cold until it gets a bit of heat through the engine. See, this engine had all four glow plugs off because the control module had failed, uh, so it was actually bad starting. But I've seen vehicles with just one glow plug off and they've had cold start misfires. So thanks for watching. <laughs>